Uh, my name is uh, Satya Sridhar. We're going to be talking about migrating related sets of data. Now, why is this important? The first thing, uh, the reason why this is important is you have all your data in your production org and Salesforce gives you various types of sandboxes. And if you have a full copy sandbox, great. You have a copy of that um, data from production already brought over into the full copy sandbox. But those things tend to be expensive. There are other kinds of sandboxes that you could create and dev pro sandboxes and dev sandboxes and whatnot. DevPro gives you a templated way of automatically copying in, uh, in some data. Um, Dev obviously gives you all the metadata, but none of the data you are expected to uh, bring in your own data using various methods. So people typically lean on uh, tools like Data Loader or um, manually creating that data um, to run their test cases. Now, that's definitely one way to move forward, but the problem with that approach, I'm sure all of you know already, is that it's a pretty tedious, time-consuming process. So you need something to make that process better. Or of course, you know, update your full copy sandbox with the latest data, given that um, you have a month uh, refresh time um, that's allowed for updating that full copy sandbox. So for those reasons is why uh, a tool like uh, Snapshot exists to help you update that data or bring in fresh data from your production org into your sandboxes, right? And part and parcel of that is you need the ability to keep those records related. So your accounts and opportunities and contacts and cases remain connected. So that way you don't have to go scrubbing all that data or do that gymnastics and we look up before you lean on something like data loader to up, uh, update those things, right? So we're gonna walk through how we're gonna make that better through Snapshot. So I see a whole bunch of folks on the call today that um, I have not seen before and um, some of you folks I have talked to many times before. So just for those folks who have not talked to before, quick introduction of Snapshot. Snapshot, we call ourselves an org management software. And our primary audience is Salesforce admins, even, uh, even though a bunch of our customers are primarily Salesforce developers. Now, what is org management? We split that up in, uh, into these categories. One, uh, clicks not code release management. Typically, when you pick up a release management software, you are really targeting developers and release managers. So there's a bunch of XML um, voodoo that goes in behind the scenes. We thought that was too much trouble. We wanted to make a tool that was kind of point and click, drag and drop and off to the races. And that's really what we have done here with Snapshot. So it's really targeting the clicks not code um, admin to rapidly get your, um, get your features released out to production so your users can immediately start using your innovation instead of jumping through the hoops. The second is the data that goes along to help with that innovation, migrate the data from production to test out um, your newly created features for, uh, for your developer sandboxes or dev pro sandboxes or update your full copy um, full copy sandboxes there. That's really where um, we are going to be talking about today. We're going to be focusing on today and that data needs to be related. So that's the second uh, facet that we focus on through Snapshot. And the third facet is of course the org documentation and optimization. Org documentation things like, especially if you're targeting things like you know, compliance or when a new administrator comes in, they need to be educated about how your org is structured. You need to give them some kind of a documentation that shows them how the data is structured, what objects are there, fields are there, how they are related. So that kind of a data dictionary, creating something like that is again, very manual, very tedious. We wanted to make that better and we have done that through a wide variety of reports and primarily targeting that um, compliance and administrator reference documentation through our data dictionary and record, um, record types versus pickless reports and whatnot. Org optimization and cleanup, depending upon the 
um, amount of metadata that you have and the uh, you know changes that you might have in your um, admin team you might have uh, various things that's no longer being used um, and things that purposes might have changed there so that's really where we want to step in clean out all the stale or unused metadata and bring your uh, org back to um, tip top uh, shape there that's really what org optimization is about you do have salesforce optimizer for that already but uh, it's our opinion that salesforce optimizer does not go far enough so we wanted to bring in some tools to make that better and we have done that through field usage pickless usage and forgotten assets to identify uh, what groups roles queues report types profiles permission set whatever is unused so you can rapidly identify them and clean them up. Last but not the least, security management. Um, that's always fun in Salesforce. We wanted to make that uh, easier to understand. We started off with a matrix to help you understand how your profiles are set up, who has access to what, but we also extended that to help you merge profiles and move over to the permission set based world that um, Salesforce has brought in to make our lives easier. Right? So all of this put together in one tool is why we call ourselves an org management software. Now that said, again, we're gonna be focusing on the relational data migration aspect of Snapshot today. So what do we bring in here? First thing is we wanna maintain relationships between those records. So any record that you move, accounts, opportunities, contacts, cases, whatever, the biggest problem in moving that data between orgs is because there is a new ID that is created. Full copy sandboxes, of course, retain the IDs there, but even there, if you wanna bring in some new data, updated data from production into that full copy sandbox, a new ID is created, which means all the relationships between your records is lost. We, are, we have a capability here to retain those relationships, so that way you can rapidly uh, rely on those relationships to trace down from opportunity to opportunity line items to products and cases and whatnot. Any, any kind of relationships that will be maintained as part of that migration. To start with any of that stuff, intuitive relationship-based object selection, meaning you start with opportunity or account, we'll immediately be able to show you because we understand the lookups and master detail relationships what things are related to that and maybe what things you want to bring in to your data migration we can automatically do that for managed packages as well choose anything you know cpq or financial force service max and so you know whatever you might have installed in your org when you choose that managed package it will automatically figure out the object hierarchy list it out so you can uh, just move on to selecting that customizing that and then reusing that without having to remember all the relationships and laying them out the right way. For, um, you know, for sensitive data sets there, we have the ability to um, scramble the data on the wire. So automatic sanitization of um, any fields that you choose, social security numbers, salary information, revenue information, whatever. And as part of the data migration, you can also deactivate any of your automatically firing things in you know, a workflows, triggers, flows, you know, any, remove restrictions on pick list values and things like that. So that way you know, you're not firing off 3000 emails when you dump a whole bunch of um, leads into your system. If you are doing some um, org merging and splits and things like that, um, in case some of the data model is slightly different, you could do field as well as value mapping um, through uh, Snapshot here. I'm going to talk about that as well as part of this webinar. With all that said, I don't want to bore you too much here. Let's jump right into the demo. So let's jump right here. All right. So here is Snapshot. This is the client portion of it. There is the managed package that's already installed in one of my orgs. And what I have done here is I've connected three different orgs together my developer sandbox connected to my testing sandbox connected to my production org. And this is a very interesting, clean way of making a connection to an org because it's as easy as you're dragging and dropping one of these snapshot items and creating a full metadata backup. You can also do a partial backup if you so prefer. 
In this case, I have created metadata backups already, and I have connected these things using deploy arrows. I did say before how it's um, you know, drag and drop kind of setups, and that's really what we have done here. Now, what we are gonna focus on is the data migration there, which is triggered off of the arrow itself. So when you right click on the arrow, along with deploying that metadata, you can also focus on data sets, building, migrating, and managing those data sets. So let's go in and build a data set. So for the purposes of this demo here, I'm going to create a brand new data set with a brand new template, right? Before we go there, let's go see what data we are trying to move. So let's go over to this org right here. This is my source org. It's a developer edition org. And I have created a, a, a list here, a list view that shows what records I'm going to move. So I'm gonna move three general electric accounts in different um, states here. And just to show you what I have done here, this is what I have, this is how I'm gonna filter things down. So company name starting with general. So these exist in one org on a different window. I have a very similar setup looking for companies starting with general. General Electric is not there. So we're gonna move data from that org into this org with all the relationships, right? So let's go see again, the three accounts. By the way, if you go into one of these things, you can see all the relationships that are part of it. There are um, some contacts there, some opportunity there, some cases there, very simplistic data just for the sake of the demo here, but then we can go in and move all that stuff as part of the migration, right? So let's jump right in, start creating the data set. So I'm gonna call this webinar demo. Um, you can also replace the existing data set, but for the sake of the demo here, I am going to create a brand new data set. And I did mention before uh, when we started off that we can create or utilize templates. And these can target you know, managed packages. Any managed package that you have in the org will get listed right here and I can select it and it will discover all the objects and lay them out in the right hierarchy. So CPQ, financial force, service max, whatever you might have, you can figure all that stuff out and then list it out in the right order with, along with all the dependencies. Right. For the sake of this demo here, I'm going to create a brand new template, right? Just to kind of keep it green field, show you guys all the different options available. Because it's a green field, it just displays all my objects here with no selections whatsoever. I'm going to migrate some accounts, some opportunities, some contacts, whatnot. So let's go forward with um, selecting them. You can select records with a filter. Easy ways of selecting, you know, record type equals partner, you know, last modified equals last year, whatever you choose, right? Or choose them by name, because I already know the names of these things. I'm gonna do exactly that. Select my three GE records. And I can always choose a lazy approach as well. Get me all the records. I wanna move everything into my full copy sandbox or uh, anything that is already there in a dev pro. I wanna move that into, uh, um, another developer or whatever. By the way, you know, because uh, Snapshot works outside of Salesforce itself, there is no umbrella like a production org umbrella. You could do a production org to production org, sandbox to sandbox, whatever you prefer as well. So I'm, I've chosen a few records for account. To build out my hierarchy, Remember I did mention that we have the ability to understand relationships. Any object that you select, it has the ability to show all the relationships there. And I can go select them, attachments or cases or contact and you know, what field establishes that relationship is displayed and I can rapidly select them and keep going down the hierarchy, right? As I select things, you can see the list on the left changes. And in this case, I'm gonna choose opportunity, opportunity line item relating to opportunity there. So I'm choosing standard objects just because everybody understands standard objects, right? There are no restrictions as to what kind of 
um, objects you can choose, custom objects, managed objects, they're all game. We are using uh, the bulk data API and SOAP API to fetch the data depending on the circumstance there. So any object that you have is per, per game. You can also put limits on the number of records that are coming through. We already chose a filter for account. I can say only get me 50 opportunities there, not, not more than that, only get me 10 of these cases. You could do that. Or you could even estimate the size. Maybe you're going into a developer org that has limited amount of um, space there. So you could say, you know, I've put some selections, put some record limits there, give me an estimated size so I can decide to change my filters or, uh, you know, move right forward. So that way, you know, you don't get stuck once the data um, gets migrated halfway through, you get an error that, hey, you're exceeding the data size limits or anything like that. You know, you can do all that stuff right here. So bottom line, any number of levels of your objects, right? And any number of objects that you want to put in the hierarchy there is perfectly fine. No limits whatsoever. We automatically select the fields based upon uh, whatever objects you choose. We do that based upon security. So if you have right access to your um, objects there, right access to these fields, we automatically pick them up. Anything that you don't have right access to, all your formula fields, things like that are automatically left behind. If you have enabled, created by, last modified by, that kind of thing for right, it'll automatically pick that up. Um, but if you do want to grab them, even if you don't have access to it, just grab them right here and add that to the list. No problems whatsoever. Right? Worst case scenario, if you don't have access to them on the destination or it will intelligently suppress it, you're not going to get an unnecessary error. And you can rinse and repeat this for every one of the objects. Now, these are the set of objects that you're going to insert or update. In addition to that, Snapshot also gives you the capability of existing data. Right? Imagine a case where you are deploying to a sandbox there, and obviously sandbox already has your users defined. Right? Maybe you don't want to use you know, the name to match with or the username to match with because the username is going to be different. Names might be a bad matching criteria because you, know, you might have too many John Smiths in your art, whatever you can absolutely choose any other field to connect with, right? So insert, update existing data, that's all the objects above the line, everything below the line, external references are existing data that you can refer to, in this case, because I'm choosing users there to connect and set the right owners created by, last modified by, whatever. With that done, let's actually build the data set there. We are using bulk data API and it will intelligently switch over to the SOAP API if you're moving attachments or um, you know, content information or any of the uh, knowledge article versions, things like that. So uh, it's pretty smart that way to flip between the two APIs. And once the data is downloaded, we're gonna turn around and push that data to the destination org. There we go, almost done, that's done. So very simplistic case, your three accounts and all the relevant, uh, relevant information that came along with it. And by the way, you can also schedule these um, you know, downloads there. So if you wanna download the data um, every so often there, because maybe you're going for a case where you're targeting CPU, CPQ managed object information, that configuration that comes along with it, your product options, features, things like that. Um, you can download them, put them away. So that way, in case you have a oops moment, you can move that data back in there and restore last week's setup that works, right? That's where the schedules come into play. Now I've downloaded the data already. Let's go migrate the data to my destination, right? So I'm gonna choose an existing data set. By the way, there are some data sets automatically grayed out for me because those objects, uh, some of those objects in this data set is not available on the destination. So that's the data set that we chose. We're gonna choose that, move forward. 
And anything that I chose here gives me a way of matching and identifying the matching criteria to update or insert data, right? By default, it uses the name field and any existing external ID fields, right? In this particular case, I do not have an external ID um, field there. And um, my name is a bad matching criteria. Why? Remember what we did here. Three orgs, uh, three um, accounts that have the exact same name. So you don't want them clobbering each other there. You still want to maintain them as is. However, I do have something that helps me here. I have these things on a different state, different city. So I could use a combination key approach to keep those records separate. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lean on my billing city combination to um, move those over. As part of this, what I'm also going to do is choose my virtual ID. Now, this is a flag to snapshot that tells it to remember what the source IDs and the destination IDs were during the first move. Now, why is this important? Let's say you're trying to move some CPQ data, right? Some of your data that you're moving over, there is no valid matching criteria because your name could be an auto number field and that keeps changing every single time, right? So the next time that you come around, you don't wanna insert a potential uh, dupe there. Having this flag will tell Snapshot hey, you migrated this data before, do not go in and insert a, a potential dupe because you know some of the name, there is no match or whatever. Uh, use that map that you created, which kept track of the source and the destination um, uh, records there and then update the record, right? So the first time it's not gonna really do anything, it just remembers the second time around, it's going to make a little bit more sense. Right? So we'll see that. So I'm gonna add the name of Billing City to um, insert the record there, and then I've added the virtual ID. We'll come back and see how this works. Right? But the rest, I'm gonna leave them as is, but in a typical migration there, you would be going through every one of these and setting the matching fields as well. You have the ability to scramble data. Any field that you choose will be sanitized, it will be scrambled. For now, we are automatically going in and implementing a, a randomization strategy. Uh, in about a week and a half, we are releasing a feature here that is going to make this rule-based. You could say, hey, don't do this random. Um, random, insert a prefix or a postfix or implement a randomization strategy. So there are some options coming to you, so which will give you the ability to decide. Maybe you're choosing an email address of a contact. You don't want to randomize that email, just add a dot invalid or a do not contact at the beginning, whatever you choose, right? But the idea is you can add whatever you need and it is going to be data type intelligent. It already is. Any dates, date type fields, uh, date time fields that you choose there will be appropriately randomized. If you are picking up a pictures field, it will go in and uh, put a, um, you know, pick up a random pick list value there and then place it in, right? In this case, I don't want to do that. I want the exact data over. If you are putting some, you know, large amounts of data there, you might want to turn off your workflow rules, duplicate rules, Apex triggers, whatever. Anything that you select will be turned off as part of the migration and then turned right back on once the migration completes. So it now executes three migrations. One, a metadata migration to turn off my workflow rule for account. Then the actual data migration. Then one more metadata migration to turn this back on. Right? So it's pretty smart to realize what you wanted to do and turn things on and off. Right? If you are targeting a production or if you're targeting like an Apex trigger, it's intelligent enough to delete that Apex trigger and then reinsert it. So sandbox, it will deactivate it, insert the data, and then reactivate the Apex trigger. So there is some intelligence that's built in. So just select whatever you want to turn off and on. With that done, you can actually start the uh, migration itself. 
One thing that is interesting here is just to make sure we cover all the bases, we gave you three options. You can upsert the data, which is of the normal data migration, right? But let's say you're targeting a training sandbox. Maybe the exact data is all you need. You shouldn't be putting anything more. So you can delete the records as well. This will go in any object that you've selected here. It will delete all existing data right here, and then you can upsert the data. Meaning, it will clean out your objects, then put whatever data is coming through right here. So that way, your training scenarios, training org scenarios are met. Right? If it's a testing org that you're going for, you, know, you don't really want to delete the data, you know, exist, uh, having some uh, additional records there is okay, perfectly fine to just upsert the data. And you can always log errors and such. So I'm just going to migrate the data set. You can see that going through. <clears throat> there we go. It's going to do a two pass solution. It did the counts, then it did the contacts, and notice. It also reordered my list right here. I had accounts, opportunities, contacts, and case here. It decided to insert my contact before case and those two before opportunities because it found some kind of a relationship there. So there is some intelligence built in where it automatically figures out the order of insertion as well. Contact is done, cases are done. It's going through the opportunity, opportunity line item. And then phase two, it hooks up all of the relationships. Once Salesforce gets done here with all the jobs, bulk data jobs, we're gonna go see how the data was brought over and then update them. There we go. Success, we moved some records there. Some couple of records were inserted. Something was updated. We're gonna go see why. Um, cases, contact, opportunities, everything was done the right way that I wanted. Now let's go see that data. So we're gonna run this again. Uh, filter starting with general. Why didn't that data come through? Let's see. Live demos are always fun. There we go. Oh, it did come through my webinar. Oh. This is my company's. There we go. So it did come through, um, just was assigned to a different person there because I was looking for a, a different uh, user. So it was moved over, California, New York, Texas, everything was set up right. If I go in, I'll be able to see the contacts moved over, my opportunities moved over, and my cases were also brought in. So everything was done the way I expected it to. Now let's go muck it up. I've moved some data over successfully and retain all the relationships. Now let's say I go into my New York one and then something changes. So let's make it interesting. Let's change the company name. Right? So from General Electric, it went to GE, which means when I go over my company name is selected. Now the idea is you are now going to migrate some data where you've already migrated that data previously and now the matching criteria is bad. We can handle that as well as part of the migration. First, you're now gonna replace the uh, data set here. 
first it already recognizes. You selected this record for migration before, but something about that has now changed. That's not a problem. You can still move through, build the data set, So exactly what I did before, notice the order of insertion here. Now it chooses and goes through with what I had before. And now when we move over, the idea is we wanna see if um, General Electric is updated to GE on the destination because now the mat matching criteria is different, is wrong now. You know? It would potentially insert a do, but uh, my claim is it's going to handle that as well. Here we go, download the data. We're gonna move forward with the migration again. Same data set, same criteria. Name, billing city, the same kind of match, except now because my name has been changed, it's now looking for GE New York, not General Electric New York. It's going to potentially insert a do. However, we still have the flag, virtual ID. Now this will intervene and say, hey, 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 hold on. You migrated this data set before, my friend. This record has been migrated over. So you shouldn't be inserting a do. You should be updating that data. So we're just gonna simply upsert the data again. That's really where the virtual ID comes in to be extremely useful. Imagine doing this for CPQ, you're gonna be manually updating that data and maintaining it. That's really where the virtual ID comes in. Notice what you see here, it updated three records, right? You should have, if um, virtual ID wasn't there, it would have inserted a dupe Whereas in this case, it updated three record instead of in, uh, inserting a dupe. And when we go look at this, that's the right org into companies, all companies. I have a GE, which is in New York exactly same data. So instead of that coming in and inserting a potential dupe, it updated that data and then kept you moving forward. So you can both insert data, you can update data, and even if you don't have a valid matching criteria, we can still handle that, right? And that includes the ability to delete all the records, insert, update as well. So great ways of updating data, inserting, and maintaining all the relationships without you having to do any VLOOKUP gymnastics enabled by Snapshot, right? That includes you know, all managed packages, uh, custom object data, whatever you choose, that's fine. That includes um, moving over content information, attachments, whatever you choose, we can handle that, including knowledge article versions. Knowledge article versions can only be inserted, not updated. So heads up on that. Now, we've done a whole bunch of things with relation to um, building the data and moving that data. Now, what happens if you are attempting to do a or merge or a split? You have taken care of that as well through manage. You can choose anything that you want and do a remap. This would say, you know, hey, account is really going over to you know, companies in the destination org or whatever, so you could do exactly that. Go to a completely different object. Or for an existing object, there is no proper match here, I want this sent over to a different field. And that recognizes what field you're trying to do and then maps over appropriately, right? So for all your org merge scenarios, this could be absolutely used. Same deal for field values as well. Imagine if you're moving some data over and a user is inactive. You don't want to set that user as the owner there. You could do that. You can completely transform this user. So you could say this user needs to be, you know, bill, uss at uh, mz.com, not the original incoming value. 
it can map that and then um, update the right value as well. And this is also going to be part of that um, intelligent transformation that I was talking about that's coming in a week and a half. So that will be um, rule based as well. Whatever change that you make, you can remap the data set. This will actually update the source data. So that way, when you move things over, it's as if you downloaded the change data, okay? Automatically taken care of for you. That's the remap. You could also bring in CSV data if so, if you are targeting like an Oracle or something like that, um, MS Dynamics, you're importing data from there, you can import them as CSV. It brings the data in and then creates a data set out of that. Oh, I clicked away too soon. Select the fields, create a data set out of that, give it a name, and then um, it can go in and create a data set out of that as well in case, yeah. Now that data set is ready for me to move things out of okay, to a completely different org. And that can include multiple objects. You don't have to um, do them on a table by table basis or an object by object basis. You can do them all in one shot, accounts and opportunities and cases, whatnot, all done in one shot. The last but not the least here, comparison. Right? Anything that you choose, if there is a difference, any data set that you choose, your accounts, you know, two different data sets. Imagine doing this for um, CPQ data between two different weeks. If there is a difference, it will show you what things were deleted, what things were missing. So in case, let's say I go for webinar information. New record on either side, if there are differences there. We can go identify what the differences are iterate through them okay so idea is wherever you um, whatever data set you choose we can very cleanly identify what things have differences if there are differences it will be lit up for you and you can drill down find what things are different and then report on them if you so prefer so what have we talked about just to kind of start grounding things up we have talked about creating metadata backups and we lean on these for um, you know, picking up the triggers and workflows, things like that. So have a, a full backup, that's always recommended. But then those connections that you establish between these data sets can be used to build and that uses the bulk data API, SOAP API intelligently to pull whatever data that you choose. You can migrate that data to any org that you want. There are no restrictions whatsoever, no production org boundaries. You can move them from anywhere to anywhere. And as part of that, great ways of um, choosing with whatever fields you want to identify an updated date uh, record there or insert a, a new record. And it can also remember what data was migrated over using that virtual ID flag. And that can be leaned on to update data elements instead of mm -hmm. inserting potential dupes. That's extremely useful for you know, migrating uh, managed package configuration, things like um, CPQ um, managed data and things, CPQ configuration and things like that. Lastly, the manage gives you the ability to remap fields and values as well as compare to identify differences in data. Right? So all of this is brought together in one tool that is Snapshot. It can help you migrate the metadata as well, the infrastructure behind um, your data there. That uh, We have done those, we have addressed those as part of some of the previous webinars and there's some upcoming webinars as well that talk about that stuff. For this particular webinar, we focused on only data. That said, let's go to any questions that you might have, but before we go there, very quick ways of contacting us in case you guys have any questions. We are available at support at metazoa.com. If you wanna to talk to us about any business elements there, feel free to email us at sales at metazoa.com. There is a 14-day free trial available on App Exchange. 
So you can use that to um, move this data elements anywhere that you want with one restriction, which is that you cannot move data into a production org. We did that purely to stop abuse there. Other than that, anything else is gain production org to a sandbox, sandbox to sandbox to prove the point is absolutely okay. There is special pricing for nonprofits as well, just in case you are a nonprofit, give us a ring, we, we can take care of you. With that said, thank you so much for your time here today. Let's switch over to questions. Jill, can you help tee up those questions for me, please? Sure. Um, can you do files? What happens to users? Does it assume the user IDs are the same? Okay, multi-part question there. So let's start at the top. Can you move files? Yes, files in Lightning is just content. Uh, we can migrate content information and retain those relationships as well. That's not a problem. We can move those libraries and the files under them um, through Snapshot, right? Um, just look for the content document. And some of the things uh, like uh, a file attached to a case has some links as well. You just have to select the right object, but uh, we can help with that. Uh, so, you know, wrapping all that stuff up. Files, yes, can be migrated. Users, second part of that question. Yes, you can move users as well. As part of migrating the user, it connects to the right profile, the right role and such, which automatically expects you to have the roles and profiles defined beforehand. Uh, just so happens we take care of that as well. The metadata aspects of that that I did not talk about today, the profile migration, role migration can be handled through our deploy metadata interfaces. So you wanna get that done first before you migrate the users. And then um, along with the users, just remember to migrate your um, permission set assignments as well. So that way your user migrations are complete. So to answer to your overall question, files, users, yes, you can do them all. And what about price book entry ID? Price book, all the IDs are going to be different. So you can definitely move price books price book um, entries that are part of it, they will connect with the right product for you. We are intelligent enough to handle um, any differences there and connect with the right uh, price book or you know standard price books, however you wanna set that up. Um, there are some intricacies there with respect to what happens if a price book is um, deactivated on one side but not the other and such. Um, so it's actually fairly complicated data. We have tried to make that simpler. If uh, overall answer is, yeah, you could absolutely move price books and price book entries as well. Um, if you have some particular scenario there that I am oversimplifying, uh, please reach out to us at support at metazova.com. We can talk about that. Okay, next one. Are you able to scramble existing data in a sandbox or do you have to export and re-import? You got to export and re-import and we are not, uh, you know, in place update tool. I mean, if you want to do that, you could do that using, you know, anonymous Apex and things like that. Um, you will have to export that data and then re-import it in. And as part of that, um, you can um, choose which fields you want to sanitize and that will take care of it. Um, so as, there, there is no other way to do that today. That said, uh, one of the cool parts about it is that works even if you have a product like Shield. If you have you know, encrypted some of the data and such, that's not a problem as long as the running user has the ability to decrypt the data and view it, we can automatically handle that as well. So um, you have to export and re-import the data in today. Okay, um, on org to org merge, let's say you wanna select a specific destination record type ID, how would you handle that? We automatically pick up the record type. So you don't have to, the idea, whole idea behind the data migration part of Snapshot is you don't have to worry about IDs at all. Um, it will automatically recognize that the IDs are going to be different. So it'll pick up, especially with the record types there, it'll pick it up based upon the S object name, account, opportunity, custom object, manage object, whatever. 
um, and then pick up the right record type name and then move forward to pick up the right ID. So the idea of snapshot, it will figure out the ID automatically. That said, um, if your question is really targeting, hey, I don't want to go with uh, the same record type with the same name, I want to go to a completely record type, um, then remap is your friend. You can tell it, hey, record type name, incoming record type name is partner, uh, the outgoing record type name really needs to be guest or something like that. Right? I'm not very creative, but um, whatever, you could change that um, in remap. And then when we migrate the data, we will connect with that particular record type name and then move things over. So bottom line, you don't have to worry about IDs. Stick with the human readable names and whatnot. Let us worry about the IDs. Okay. Um, how is this different from Data Loader? Well, um, biggest thing about Data Loader, well, let's start with the similarities first. Um, data loader uses bulk data API as well, right? So from that perspective, it cannot do things like um, content or um, you know, knowledge article versions and attachments. It does a really poor job of whatever. So we come in, solve all of those because first we don't stick with the bulk data API. We flip intelligently between the bulk data API and the data API, the SOAP API. But the most important point is this, relationships. With Data Loader, you are going to be doing all sorts of gymnastics to um, connect the right opportunities to accounts. And that's just one example, right? You will insert the accounts and then you will um, pick up their IDs, um, change your opportunity um, setups before you start uploading opportunities. You don't have to do any of that stuff with Snapshot. Right? That's what um, you're expecting the tool to do. We will take care of that for you. You just tell it, I want these accounts, these opportunities, boom. We will take care of it and then uh, hook it up the right way. That by itself makes a very big difference. Okay. And what about pricing? Pricing. Um, Reach out to sales and they will help you with it. Um, if you are looking for a snapshot, which includes the data migration, um, that's on a per user pricing. Um, but we do sell data migration all by itself and the name of the product is Monarch. Um, that is on a org based pricing, unlimited pricing there. Uh, so we have both options. If all you wanna do is data migration, that's perfectly okay, but most people we have found um, prefer to combine um, data migration and metadata migration. So for that, snapshot pricing is the way to go. Reach out to sales and we can work with you. Okay, and um, just one more on org to org. Can you go from professional to an unlimited edition? Professional, unfortunately, my friend, you are stuck. <clears throat> professional edition does not give you access to most APIs. Um, you can get access to data API, that's great, but um, you are very limited. So we don't actually support professional edition. We are enterprise are better only at this time. I am really sorry. I don't know of a, um, a product that can go down to the professional edition level there simply because of um, various API restrictions. That's so it. no, we do not. That's all we have. That's all we have. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for your time. Thank you, Joe, for um, taking care of the MC part of it for me. Yeah. Um, if you guys have more questions, this is not the end. Feel free to reach out to support. There are no limits to the number of questions or the amount of training you can ask for as part of your license subscription. So feel free to reach out to support as many times as you want, as often as you want. And we have people standing by to take care of you. With that said, thank you so much for your time. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Shredder.